Hello everyone, what you're seeing in front of you is a tweet by David Schwartz. David Schwartz is the CTO at Ripple. He's one of the original people to work on the XRP ledger. And this might be old news to lots of people, but I've only recently just found this. And essentially what happened is he posted a tweet in 2017. That tweet was talking about the price of XRP. He said, it can't be dirt cheap. It doesn't make any sense. If XRP costs $1, They'd need a million XRP, they as in the banks. They'd need a million XRP, which would cost $1 million. If XRP cost a million dollars, they'd need one XRP, which would, again, cost $1 million. That sounded pretty obvious, but the second part was really interesting. Except that the higher prices make payments cheaper. Now, we have to understand what Ripple is trying to do in the first place. Who is their target audience? Is it us? No, actually, it's not. It's the banks. It's those who are going to be transferring huge amounts of money. It's the institutions that are moving the money across borders and the companies they need the fees to be cheap. And with the Ripple technology, the higher the price, the actual cost of those payments becomes cheaper. Right now, you can buy a million dollar house with Bitcoins. When Bitcoins were at $300, it would move the market too much and be too expensive to be practical. So higher prices make payments cheaper. This is exactly what I'm talking about. So the thing we have to understand here is who is the target audience for Ripple? Well, it's big institutions, right? What do the institutions want from XRP? Well, they want it to be cheap. In order for it to be cheap, the XRP price has to be higher. So for XRP to work, it can't be cheap. It can't be dirt cheap. It just doesn't make financial sense for them to actually push out the technology because the technology wouldn't be as useful as it's supposed to be unless the price is really high. Hours later after this post, the post was deleted and that really adds fuel to the fire, right? Let's say that tweet was seen by Brad Garlinghouse, right? The CEO at Ripple. He knows Ripple better than anyone. He also knows that the retail investors, me and you, shouldn't be buying XRP is not the point. The point of that technology that he has been on the forefront of is for institutions, not for us. Yet we own it. So when David Schwartz puts out a bit of information like that and creates more FOMO for the retail investors, that's going completely against what Ripple wants. Ripple doesn't want that. They want the institutions involved, not the retail investors. So that tweet was deleted. Obviously, somebody's got an amazing screenshot there. And now that tweet will forever live on. But understanding that XRP's whole desire is not for us to be involved and that it needs high prices for it to make sense technologically and financially for these institutions. It all paints this big picture that kind of brings you away from what the charts say. And that leads me to start believing that the chart is almost absolutely pointless here because we already know that these partnerships around the world are being made with Ripple to do these cross-border payments. We already know that's happening. The SEC case is limiting that growth because lots of the American institutions don't want to jump on board until there's clarity. Other countries in the world are following what the US are doing about it. So they are holding back on signing this Ripple technology. And so it leads me to believe that when this SEC case closes or settles, and it's given that clarity that is needed for the institutions to jump on, we would see a move for XRP is straight up. Th this is the crazy thing about XRP. It would go straight up bigger than any growth we can map out using the Fibonacci's. We can put the Fibonacci's on here and go, oh yeah, look, $10 it's going to be. You could even put the super cycle on there and go, oh look, $60 at the top there. That's the super cycle fib based on the charts. But this chart is a lie because this reflects the movement of XRP based on retail investors who have shifted the price for XRP, me and you. We have shifted the price for XRP, basically none. The moves we've had from 0.002 cents all the way up to the all-time high at about $3.50. That is basically the limit of what we, the retail investors, can do. We simply cannot transact enough to move the price up to those numbers. And we're not the target audience. When the target audience comes in, the institutions come in, they flick that switch to say, yes, Ripple technology, we have the partnership. Let's click the on button, all the payments now, trillions of dollars every day transferring everywhere around the world for dirt cheap, that price is going to not just go straight up into, into the three digit levels. I'm not smart enough to figure out exactly the price point. Maybe I can do that as a research piece at some point, but the target's definitely not 10 to $13 based on that. If the banks all adopt and Ripple delivers the technology and provides that use case to all the institutions, the price is going to go vertical and it's going to stay high. Again, the whole point of XRP 
is to create those cheap cross-border payments. They won't be cheap cross-border payments unless the price is high. And quite frankly, where we're at today at 33 cents is minuscule in price. Even David Schwartz himself in this tweet said that a dollar is dirt cheap. I mean, I have been saying that. <laughs> I have been saying that any time you're under a dollar for XRP, it's a ridiculous price. But this is kind of backing that up. And, and I'm not saying that we're going to see a million dollar XRP. I, I think he was saying that for the comparison's sake. But certainly triple figures, like in the hundreds, the 200, 300, 400, I've seen cases up there at $560, but it's really thrown me into a little bit of a pickle as to how, do, how should I treat XRP now? Should I treat that as a legacy holding? Should I keep that held like people hold Bitcoin? Or do I exit at my 10 to $13 price range? Alternatively, I could treat any new investments I make as the price targeted based tokens where I leave at certain price targets. But I leave all of my XRP to the side and forget about it and wait for this institutional adoption to take place. It's something to think about. And I've found this really interesting. I have to put a lot more thought into this moving forward. Tell me what you think about the XRP price. Do you think that where we're at right now is dirt cheap? Do you think a dollar is dirt cheap? And how high do you think it's going to go? Oh, and here's a little fun one. How much XRP do you have? And if XRP did reach $100, what would your portfolio be worth? Please click like and subscribe. You can take both of those back if you want, if I make you mad at some point. And if you want to follow along with the strategies and the weekly updates of the market, please consider becoming a member. Stay emotionless out there. I'll see you in the next one.